Welcome to foreclosure.com. My name is Tim Jones, and I'm excited to introduce our guest, Mark Gilbo. Uh, before we move forward, please like and subscribe to our channel uh, for the latest videos. Hi, Mark. Thank you for speaking with me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank no, you very glad. much. No, we're glad to have you. Uh, look, before we get started, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background in real estate? Yeah, I mean, I've been, um, I mean, I started in real estate back in 92 as an investor. Mm -hmm. I got out of high school in 88. I went to college for a few years, studied a bunch of real estate. Um, Ron LeGrand, Carlton Sheets, all those guys at the time that were around, you know, trying to sell courses. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, uh, I got into real estate, you know, mostly flips, you know, wholesaling some stuff. And um, it wasn't a big, a big one on rentals. So I did mostly flips just to get in and out of a property. Um, I did that mostly off and on through the 90s as I worked part time, you know, at various jobs. Um, then I became a loan officer in 2000, did a ton of loans. Hmm. It was the craziest time, as you know, you know, before 08. Hmm. And I did that till 07, right before that, you know, the crash happened. And um, I did millions of dollars of loans. I learned so much during that time frame. Hmm. Um, I became a realtor in 2011 because I was doing, a, again, back in investing, buying REOs during that time because everybody was belly up in a lot of ways. And um, so I got became a realtor because nobody would call me back. Mm -hmm. I would call in a house listed with a realtor and no one would, would give me a call. Um, so I'm like, what, what am I doing? I just take my course, you know, two months worth of work and I got my license. And um, so I did that, you know, I, I listed properties, you know, I did still did wholesaling then. I did quite a bit of that. Um, what I couldn't wholesale or flip to other investors, I did. Uh, I listed it. Mm -hmm. So I had a little little thing going on where I could talk to people looking to get out of the property, quick sale. If it wasn't something they were interested in when it came to my offer, I, I flipped it over to a listing. That worked really well. Yeah. And um, I became a broker in 2016. I, I sold enough, got all my education, did all that. And um, I became you know, a pretty good sized REO broker. I got some really good accounts. You know, we work some of the big banks and, um, big asset managers that manage the properties for the banks. So we still do that today. We still do a lot of foreclosure properties. And um, I just opened a brokerage in Florida, central Florida, near the villages mm -hmm. uh, this year, just last month. And I'm, I'm in the process of setting up the website and getting all that stuff done. I've been looking at that market for at least two years to go into. And we just finalized it. So that's a quick tell. Yeah. Well, well, congratulations on the new brokerage. Uh, Thank you. And uh, thanks for sharing your experience with us. Welcome. Thank you. So, yeah, let's let's dive into it. So so what are you currently seeing in Central Florida housing market and the well-known the Villages retirement community? Yeah, you know, I've been watching that for a couple of years. I've done a ton of videos on it. Um, the Villages is a unique place. It's, you know, it's a 55 plus community. People around the whole country are moving to it. Or they want to retire there to a certain extent, or they'll buy a house, just go there in summer because of the weather, you know, you know, you're in Florida. Um, and it's, it's a different place. It does hold up better than the rest of Florida. Uh, they're probably the only one that really competes is Miami right now, but I see the prices coming down in the villages still. Um, I've been seeing them drop for the last year and a half. The peak of the villages was mid 2022. That was a peak. So if you bought a house in January 2022 or later and you try to sell it, you're going to lose money. I, I can pull up 100 examples right now on the screen. So I see the inventory increasing. That has increased quite a bit, about 45%. Um, and the villages is better than the outskirts of the villages. The outskirts are even worse. There's a ton of inventory, overbuilding, and uh, people panic during COVID. During COVID. No, they're all buying all this stuff. Yeah. So I see inventory increasing, prices dropping, without a doubt. And um, I see some people in the near future probably panicking a little bit, you know, with the pricing. So they'll try to get out of it and they're going to lose money. Interesting. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your perspective. Um, can you help viewers understand how buying a foreclosure or a pre-foreclosure could be an affordable housing option given the current market conditions? Yeah, I think it's a great option today, especially today, because, 
you know, prices went up so fast in the last three years that they have some equity. Even if you're in foreclosure, you know, in 2008, if you're in foreclosure, you're buried. You didn't have the equity build up. Um, now what you have is you have this major ramp up of pricing in the last three years. So even if you are in foreclosure, you can probably as an investor or as a, a realtor, you can probably work with that client and either purchase the house from them and maybe they still walk away with a little bit of money or at least list it to where they can walk away with some money. Um, so that, that's kind of really what's been keeping foreclosures down a little bit was the fact that we've had this major ramp up in pricing. Um, but again, as with that changes, you're going to see an increase in foreclosures, which you already are. So there are going to be some really good deals coming up from here on out in foreclosures without a doubt. Interesting. Okay. Um, just to dive into that a little bit further, you know, what opportunities are you seeing with distressed assets like foreclosures and pre-foreclosures? Yeah, I think um, besides working with a seller directly, um, you can still buy foreclosures, but I'm seeing a lot better deals outside of the major cities. Everywhere I go, no matter where I look, if you're looking on the inner city uh, to buy a foreclosure, the deal... I think as you go more suburban, rural, the deals are much better. I'm seeing, even in New York, upstate New York, where we have another office, I'm seeing prices below 100 grand again, 60,000, 30,000, where it was hard to find a year and a half ago, two years ago. Everything was so inflated. Mm -hmm. So I think your deals for now are going to be outside the major cities. I think that's where someone should be looking. And I also think the population's kind of moved that way, anyways. Um, just because of some of the cities, but just because yeah. it's cheaper to go out that way and taxes are cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that's where you're going to see it. I think you're going to see a bunch of deals outside of the major cities, um, no matter where you go. Yeah, no, that that makes sense, especially with, you know, remote work taking off over the last couple of years and how people can kind of be a little bit further from where their offices are. Yeah, that, that... yeah, that, that's a big one. And we're getting every day phone calls. We'll get people who are looking... You know, they can't afford to live in the city, but they can afford to buy a house 20 minutes outside Yeah, and where it's a little bit more rural and the prices are a little bit more, uh, you know, manageable for them and their budget. Yeah. No. no. OK, thank you. Um, so I think this is a, an important one for our audience. So what are your expectations for the Central Florida Orlando real estate market for the 2000 or the 2024 uh, spring selling season? Yeah, I think um, prices will continue to slowly drop. It's an election year. So let's remember that. Um, and that that's important. There's been a lot of money still funneled into the economy over the last three or four years. You know, there's a ton of money printed. So that's still working its way out through the system. You know, be, people bought a lot of properties. They're still spending it. Um, so I still see prices dropping slowly. Um, until after the election and maybe it ramps up a little bit. The only thing I can see that really slows that down or maybe keeps prices where they're at is a rate drop. Um, but it would have to be significant. I don't, I don't see a half point making a big difference. I think you're going to have to see 4%, that three and a half again for it to be economical again. That's my opinion. I, I think prices drop, inventories up, and I still have a question mark on rates oh, yeah. right on. <laughs> i think everyone does yeah um especially after the last fed meeting i think people were anticipating you know some sort of rate cut so we'll see well, you know that they tried that in december remember they lowered rates and all they got was a ton of inflation yeah it doesn't help the problem is when you when you lower rates everything else goes up in price so you know it doesn't matter if i have a house if i can't go buy food yeah, you got you got to got to be able to eat first. Yeah, you know, about shelter, right? So yeah, that's kind of where we're at as a, as a U.S. economy. Oh, it's scary, but no, I appreciate that. Um, so how do you utilize foreclosure.com to find off market affordable housing? I was really impressed in the fact that I yeah, I'll be honest, with you, I wasn't aware of how many city owned properties are out there in the country. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe. I mean, my city alone on your website has three hundred and something city-owned properties. That is insane for a medium-sized city. So 
I like the fact that if I have a client call me and I'm, I'm selling them properties or helping them, you know, buy an investment property in Syracuse or Florida, doesn't matter. If someone says, Hey, you know, I've been thinking of buying something in Texas. I can send them to a site like yours and like foreclosure.com where you can say, look, you know, go over there. There's going to be a ton of properties. Um, take a look. And the good thing is you have a wide variety. You got sheriff sales, you got foreclosures, you have uh, what, you know, REOs, obviously you have tax liens. There's a bunch of stuff you have on there that someone can make an offer on, or at least short sales. Yeah. And at least um, start working towards finding some deals. Yep. And I'm not afraid of that as a broker. Cause for me, if they're interested in something, I'll reach out and I'll partner with another realtor in another city to make it happen. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Um, uh, foreclosure.com is a great place to start your search and to, to do your due diligence to find these type of opportunities. So I'm glad you're, you found it useful. Yeah. And let me, let me just add this is that remember I'm limited to my MLS. So if I'm going to look on the MLS, I can only see what I'm attached to. And even though I'm in two MLSs, I can see half of New York and half of Florida. I can't see all 50 states unless they go to your site. That's a big difference. Yeah, no, that's that's very valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Mark, that's all the time we have for today. I, I do want to thank you again for joining us. So thank you, Mark. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been great. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, Remember to sign up for our free foreclosure email alerts. Until next time, I'm Tim Jones with foreclosure.com, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Tim.